Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'm going to quickly show you guys how to wire up a computer power supply or PSU to a car stereo or head unit deck, however you want to call it. I personally call it a head unit. Uh, it's a fairly simple process, very similar to hooking up a uh, power supply to a car amplifier to power up a car subwoofer or car speakers. Uh, I have previous videos made on that, so you want to take a look at that, um, just search it up. And I'm still using my same Colmax 600 watt PSU. I still have two 12 volt powers cut up and two grounds cut up. And like I said, it's overall a very simple process and very similar to hooking up a car amplifier. Uh, you just simply need to find the uh, 12 volt power ground and the remote on the uh, wiring harness of the head unit. Now I have three different head units sitting here. Um, on the left side, starting at the bottom, is the JVC KD-G110. And then on the right, a Pioneer DH-P6000UB. And on top of the JVC is a Sony XR150, which is a much older one. As you can see, it doesn't have a CD, only a tape player. Um, the reason why I'm showing you three is just to show you some differences between them. Like, the way the Sony's built is that there's no fuse built into the actual head unit. It's built onto the wire. And I'll quickly show you that, too. For both JVC and Pioneer, are actually both very similar. You know, all the fuses are built in. So it's just wiring up the two wires and then uh, turning it on. Of course, I'm not doing a permanent um, wire up because I take these head units and I sell them and all that so I'm not gonna I just usually power them up to see if they work fine uh, but the proper way to do it is mainly solder the wires together and then probably heat shrink it and keep it in a safe place and all that uh, I'm not I'm just gonna tie them up real quick and then power them on show you that it works and uh, whatever you want to do that after you can do alright so looking at the rear of the head units um, of course these are the factory harnesses that come with the head unit as you buy them um, First you want to locate the ground, uh, actually, well not the ground, but actually no, you can locate the ground first if you want, but anyways, it's the black cable, it's all the black, always the black cable. Uh, all the head units, as I've seen, always have similar color cables. All the rest you can worry about later because that's mainly for speaker hookup, so like I said, you want to do a permanent hookup um, by hooking up speakers to this, you can too. And then second, the other two cables you want is the accessory and the power, which is yellow and red. Usually it's only those two colors. Um, if it's not, they'll probably have it somewhere in the manual telling you which color does what. Anyways, it has to be accessory and power. And then what I do, I tie them up right here. Uh, you can't really see that well, but I tied these two up. Uh, because So what the power does is that it powers it up, and then the accessory sort of counts as the car starting up to tell the head unit to power on and all that. If you don't have the accessory hooked up to the power, the thing will not power up. I've tried it before. I took a closer look at it, I found out, and that's how it's working now. And for the JVC, it's going to be the same thing. For the Sony here, which is much older, like I said, it has these two little big fuse boxes here. Um, still, red, yellow, accessory, power, and then a regular ground right over here. And then from my PSU, pretty much, uh, make sure it's powered off and then do a couple switches to make sure there is no power if you have powered it on before. Mine has been sitting for a couple days now. Um, but it's off and I can, as uh, usual, you have to have the same hookup you would do is just short out the main cable and then have the fan running and then just find um, two little powers and grounds from the Molex cables I'll show you later. And then... Um, so these are the two powers that I have here. What I do, like I said, I'm just going to wrap them right now, you know, with the accessory and um, power, 12 volt power. And then um, it's, I mean, you're probably looking at me right now like that looks very unsafe and all that. I'm going to tell you it is. Um, but like I said, it's only temporary. You know, I'm going to do it for like a quick second or a couple minutes. You know, I wouldn't make it permanent though. You definitely do want to make sure you have a secure connection if you plan to run this thing for a long time. And of course, uh, make sure there's plenty of cables running through so you don't short out different cables or have them burn through and burn your house down or anything. So hopefully you guys can see that. There's a power coming from the PSU over to the accessory and power from to the head unit. 
and then I have the two grounds right here running to the ground into the um, head unit. Alright, so I'm actually only going to demonstrate it on the Pioneer because um, I'm not going to show that all the other ones do work and all that. I mean, they do, but I'll probably make it in separate videos, just a, just a main video about the head unit itself, but not about powering it on. But anyways, what you want to do now is play in your PSU and then power it on. Uh, there should be a little switch on it. If yours doesn't have a switch, then it might be straight plug-in, so be careful about that. Anyway, switching it on, I can hear it power up, and there we go. We are up and running. Of course, it's going to go into demo mode. Um, then you press display, yeah, display key to turn off demo mode, and then you press the source to turn it back on. Right now, it's in tuner. Um, I've tried it before. Everything works CD. I actually had another Pioneer head, uh, Pioneer head unit that my friend brought over. And we tried hooking up speakers to it, and it worked perfectly fine. We just don't have a tuner antenna in here, so can't do much with that. But CDs do work, all that. Um, that's one thing I like about this Pioneer head unit. It's got a motorized uh, faceplate. Don't see too many of those today. But anyways, um, as you can see, everything works fine. I uh, still have to figure out all these controls, but um, probably going to let this guy go after because I don't really have much use for it. Uh, installing it is going to be quite a pain and I just don't want to do that. Not saying it's hard because um, I've done it with a friend before for my other friend's car. That's where this JVC is coming from. Uh, we installed a near Pioneer head unit into his uh, but it's much more easier because it's been done before. Alright so a quick overview of how the PSU is wired up. Here's the main cable that goes usually into the motherboard. Uh, to power it up. What I have done is that between the green cable, there's only one green. Sometimes if you buy different ones from different countries it might be a blue as I have read before or maybe even a different color other than blue or green. But anyways you have to find that one single color that stands out and hook it up to a black. Now I know you can't see it right now so let me zoom in real quick. Alright so hopefully that's a good view but as you can see I got a little jumper cable right here going from the green over to the black. Now the way I do it is, like I said, I just jumped it. Uh, I've seen other people do it where they cut both wires and they tie them together, maybe solder them and also cover them with something to prevent it from doing something else. But anyways, this mainly just creates a short and uh, after you do this, you turn on the PSU just by itself, you'll hear the fan running and, hope, and that's a good sign because it means that you've created the short and the fan is running so you're going to get power constantly as long as you have this short Alright, so now you're probably looking at a bunch of cables and getting pretty confused but anyways what you want to do is get a uh, Molex connector there's uh, other names for these four pins whatever um, but I guess the majority of the people call them Molex but anyways uh, what I do is as you can see this one I cut one yellow and I mean one power which is the yellow and then one ground which is the black and I just dropped it but anyways you want to cut one of those and that's mainly your power source so as you can see my wires are running directly straight into the PSU um, others are just linking to to other Molex uh, connectors you can also cut those too because either way they run straight into the PSU unless you already cut it off then it will not but that's the way I do it I run a direct wire from it instead of having it extend out all the way over here per se the ending one um, but you know it's uh, mainly your preference on how to do it but overall that's the main I don't know sequence right, to it. So that should pretty much come to the end of this video um, if you have any questions or comments about this just feel free to let me know I'll try my best to answer them um, of course you know like I said if you're in a different country sometimes cables are gonna be different colors and all that just make sure you find what's what and then have it um, secure and then power it on to see if it works or not and then do your finalization like you know like I said making it secure soldering it don't just have it hanging like this like I like it just came off right now so you know but it's mainly just a a temporary hookup that's why otherwise um, I'd probably have it done a lot more cleaner and yeah like I said anything just let me know I check daily hopefully I'll respond to you within a day or before if not then I'm very sorry about that but I will definitely respond to you if not keep bothering me about it alright and other than that um, thanks for watching